In our previous video we have seen how Pakistan economy ended up being in a horrible state they are, and how the decisions right from their independence have led them to this. Cut to two years later since we released that video, we will see how they have managed to make their condition more worse. If you are new to our channel please subscribe, and enjoy the video. If you've been paying attention to the news lately, then you must have heard that Pakistan is experiencing an economic crisis. This economic crisis is unlike anything we've seen or discussed before. The country's 223 million people are facing total economic collapse and mass starvation. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves are nearly depleted to only $5 billion, which can only cover less than a month's worth of imports. The inflation rate is well above 30%. And the Pakistani rupee is in free fall having dropped 32% against the US dollar in the last year. So, what happened? Why is Pakistan experiencing its worst economic situation since independence? Well, problems for the Pakistan economy did not appear overnight. Even after gaining independence for 76 years, Pakistan has failed to address a number of fundamental issues that have led to this kind of situation. The history of Pakistan is filled with political instability, military dictatorships, terrorism, and corruption. As a result, the country never experiences sustained economic growth for an extended period of time. Pakistan's economy has gone through several ups and downs since its inception in 1947. In the early years, Pakistan's economy was largely agrarian, with agriculture accounting for a significant portion of the country's GDP. The country experienced some economic growth in the 1960s and 1980s, but this growth was uneven and was not able to keep up with the country's growing population. In the early 2000s, Pakistan experienced a period of economic growth, driven in part by the government's focus on infrastructure development and increased foreign investment. However, this growth was largely unsustainable and was followed by a period of economic stagnation in the late 2000s. In the similar time frame, Pakistan started to take foreign loans for its infrastructure development and to cover rising imports. However, the nation's exports started to decline and its imports started to increase. Pakistan's major exports are rice and textile, which are very competitive products in the international market, and a struggling economy like Pakistan cannot produce these items as efficiently as the other developed countries that have more resources. That's why exports decreased from 10.6% of GDP in 2015 to 8.5% in 2018. Conversely, imports increased from 17% to 19% of GDP. Additionally, the infrastructure improvement that Pakistan had hoped would boost its economy, ended up being a letdown for the nation. Like the Belt Road Initiative led by China, it provided loans for the construction of ports and infrastructure to nations like Pakistan. Pakistan also participated in the scheme. They considered this to be a fantastic way to upgrade its infrastructure. As a result, they had to borrow more than $30 billion. But because China brought its own labor and materials, Pakistan didn't gain much, and the local economy did not benefit from it. Plus foreign investors and big corporations always turn their eyes whenever it comes to a big investment, this is because of uncertainty, weak political leadership, military rule and terrorism in the country. Additionally, Pakistan's political leaders have made some terrible decisions in the past few years. Like in 2018, when the ruling party artificially boosted the Pakistani rupee's value compared to the US dollar. They wanted to beat their chests and declare that the economy was stable in the run-up to the election. But in reality, they invested $7 billion in this project. In turn, the strong currency ended up being a problem for exports which were already struggling for a long time. Also, when the oil prices climbed in 2022, the rest of the world increased fuel prices for their citizens. And even the Pakistan's authorities made the recommendation that petrol prices should be increased. But the political leadership decided that it would cut oil prices instead. They wanted to appease voters, but this came at a massive cost of a 250 billion Pakistani rupee subsidy. It was money that Pakistan didn't have. You see Pakistan's major income from foreign currency also comes in form of remittances, sent by Pakistanis living in the Middle East and other parts of the world. Generally, these inflows are a blessing during stressful times. People frequently send a lot more money home when their local currency declines. For example, when they send $1, they will receive 250 Pakistani rupees rather than just 200. And these inflows increase the nation's foreign exchange reserves. These remittances support 8.5% of the economy in Pakistan. But in December 2022, the inflows fell to a 31-month low. 
This could have happened because after COVID many people lost their jobs, and also simply because people didn't care about the economy because of the constantly falling Pakistani rupees. Also tourism, which was a good source of revenue is declining rapidly. As nobody wants to travel to a dangerous country, so foreign travelers choose to visit more exciting locations like Sri Lanka and India. This was not the end of problems, a natural disaster made its way in mid-2022 in the form of massive floods, devastating the nation. Nearly 1,700 people were killed and it caused $30 billion of economic damages. Crops were also wiped out contributing to economic losses. Consider cotton as an example, nearly 60% of Pakistan's exports are textiles, making it the fourth largest supplier of cotton in the world. Without cotton, the 10 million person textile industry came to an immediate halt, and export revenue took a significant hit. This also had a negative impact on conventional agriculture. Also wheat, a staple of the Pakistani diet, was completely eradicated in some areas. The nation had to import foods that it was largely self-sufficient before, and this harmed the economy as well. According to the World Bank, flood damages caused economic losses of over $30 billion, over $16 billion reconstruction is needed. And Pakistan is not in condition to pay the cost of this reconstruction. So yes, the situation is only getting worse. Unless Pakistan finds a magic solution to increase its revenue, cut costs, and get out of this mess. Luxury imports were prohibited by the government, but it's too late now, people are beginning to lose faith in the Pakistani rupee and want to change it into a more widely accepted currency. Right now, taking new loans for more money seems like the only way to get out. Pakistan is already negotiating for assistance with the IMF. However, there are many conditions attached to IMF loans, including raising taxes, cutting spending on the government, using a free floating exchange rate, cutting back on defense spending, and more. Some of these limitations will be politically very unpopular. Pakistan is also in talks for economic assistance from their allies. But many countries are keeping distance with Pakistan because of the ongoing political instability for the power struggle there. Yet these loans are only going to serve the country for some time. Future increases in remittances may also significantly aid Pakistan's economy in building up its foreign exchange reserves. But first, Pakistan must organize its own affairs. They are currently experiencing a situation closer to a civil war. It is impossible to attract any foreign investment in these circumstances. Any country that wants exponential growth and a stable currency must have political stability, and Pakistan most severely lacks this. So, what are your views about this video? Let us know in the comment section below. And we are glad you watched the full video. Please hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. Thank you.